Now that you understand what pressure is and how it's measured, we can begin to see how pressure affects the behavior of gases. One of those behaviors is described by Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is named after Robert Boyle, who in 1662 figured out that there's a relationship between the pressure and a volume of a gas when it's at constant temperature. So in the diagram at the bottom, I have two pistons. Both of the pistons are at the same temperature. If I push on one of the pistons to create a smaller volume of gas, it causes the pressure reading on the gauge to be higher. The opposite is also true. If I take the piston and I create a larger volume inside, the pressure reading on the gauge becomes lower. This behavior can also be described using balloons. Again, we're assuming that the balloons are at constant temperature. If I take a balloon at San Diego, it's going to have a certain size. And if I take that exact same balloon and I bring it up to Denver, where it's at a higher elevation, the volume of the balloon should get larger because the atmospheric pressure in Denver is lower. This type of relationship is called an inverse relationship, whereas the pressure increases, the volume decreases. Or as pressure goes down, volume goes up. The official definition of Boyle's Law is that the volume of a fixed amount of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to pressure. We can represent this relationship mathematically by saying P times V equals some constant K. Because that K value is constant, when the pressure and volume measurements change, they have to change in opposite directions. So if the pressure goes up, the volume will have to go down in order to maintain a constant value. When we graph relationships that are inversely proportional, they produce a hyperbola, as shown in the graph below. Again, notice the relationship. As the pressure across the bottom of the graph gets larger, the volume on the y-axis gets smaller. A second law describing the behavior of gas is called Charles's Law. This was first proposed by Jacques Charles in 1787, and he was able to describe the relationship between temperature and volume at constant pressure. This is the same principle that is used when filling up a hot air balloon. When you're filling up a hot air balloon, the atmospheric pressure around the balloon is not changing. However, you're blowing hot air into the balloon, and so you're raising the temperature of the gas inside the balloon. And so as the temperature of the gases inside the balloon goes up, the volume of the balloon gets larger, and the hot air balloon begins to inflate. We can also see this if we were to take a balloon and drop it down into some liquid nitrogen. At standard temperature and pressure conditions, nitrogen is a gas. But if we cool it down significantly so that it's at a very, very low temperature, we can create liquid nitrogen. And if I take a balloon that is filled with air and I dip it down into liquid nitrogen, which is very, very cold and has a low temperature, the balloon shrivels up as its volume becomes much smaller. This type of relationship is called a directly proportional relationship. As temperature goes up, volume goes up. Or as temperature goes down, volume goes down. Officially, Charles' Law states that the volume of a fixed amount of gas at a constant pressure is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. The Kelvin temperature part of this definition is important. If you are given temperatures in degrees Celsius, you need to convert them to Kelvin in order for the relationship to work properly. Charles' Law can be described mathematically by saying volume divided by temperature equals some constant value or V over T. Dividing two values creates a directly proportional relationship. And when we graph a directly proportional relationship, we get a diagonal line. The graph to the right shows a gas at three different pressures. The red line is actually a pressure at a half an atmosphere, whereas the blue line is a pressure of two atmospheres. So remember back to Boyle's Law, if you have a low pressure, you will have a big volume, which is why the red line is up much higher. But if you have a high pressure, you'll have a small volume, which is why the blue line is much lower. What's more important when looking at Charles' Law is that notice that as the temperature values go up across the x-axis, the volume numbers also go up. If both values are changing in the same direction, we call that relationship directly proportional. A third law that describes the behavior of gases is called Gay-Lussac's Law. This was first proposed by Joseph Gay-Lussac in 1802 and he described the relationship between temperature and pressure when you have constant volume. Unlike Boyle's Law and Charles' Law, where the volumes of the substances can change, 
usually best described with balloons that have flexible sidings that can shrink and expand. Gay-Lussac's law requires a constant volume, so these containers will need to be rigid. In the diagram at the bottom, I have a glass flask, and glass is going to be an example of a rigid container, where it's not going to shrink and expand with changing temperature. If I take a glass flask and I put it down into an ice bath, the temperature is going to be very cold, and so the gas particles inside the flask are going to be moving around slowly. If I take that flask and hook it up to a manometer, it gives us a pressure reading of one atmosphere. If I take that same glass flask and I move it into a hot water bath with boiling water, well now the water is much hotter, so it's going to cause the gas particles to become hotter and they're going to begin to move around faster. As they move around faster, they collide more often with the container, creating a higher pressure. And so the reading on the manometer will be higher than it was when it was in cold water. So low temperatures create low pressures and high temperatures create high pressures. You are probably most familiar with Gay-Lussac's law when checking the tire pressure inside your car tires. To check the pressure in your car tires, you take a tire gauge and you press it on the valve stem of your tire. And then depending on what kind of gauge you have, you get a numerical pressure reading on a ruler type device or on a dial on the front of your tire gauge. If you were taught how to check pressure properly, you should know that tire pressure should always be checked before you drive while the tires are cold. The reason for this is as you drive, friction between the rubber of your tires and the road causes the tire to heat up. Because the rubber is generally a rigid container, it doesn't change its volume easily, so the volume of the tire is basically constant. And as the temperature of your tire increases, the pressure of your tire increases as well. So if you were to check the tire pressure after you've driven for a while, it should be at a higher temperature than before you started. And so checking your tire pressure after your tires are warm will give you an artificially high pressure reading and will cause your tires to actually be underinflated when they're cold. You may also have read the warning labels that are on aerosol containers or other containers containing compressed gases. I know the font on this label is very small, but the label says, caution, high pressure gas. Cylinder temperature should not exceed 52 degrees Celsius or 125 degrees Fahrenheit. This is because as the aerosol can or other compressed cylinder gets warmer, the cylinder cannot expand. So the molecules inside begin to move around faster and faster and faster and create a higher pressure. If the pressure gets too high, that container will actually explode. Gay-Lussac's law is officially stated that the pressure of a fixed amount of gas at constant volume is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. Again, notice the temperature has to be in Kelvin rather than degrees Celsius, so you'll need to convert. The mathematical relationship can be stated pressure divided by temperature equals some constant value. As with Charles's law, dividing any two values creates a directly proportional relationship. And when I graph a directly proportional relationship, I will get a diagonal line. So in the graph to the right, as temperature increases across the bottom of the graph, the pressure also increases along the y-axis. I can combine each of the three gas laws on the previous slides together to form one equation. This equation is called the combined gas law. Now notice that there are ones on the left-hand side and twos on the right-hand side. The ones mean before I make any changes. And then I manipulate the system by changing the pressure or changing the volume or changing the temperature so that afterwards I have a new set of pressures, volumes, and temperatures which are labeled with the number 2. So P1, V1, and T1 mean the pressure, volume, and temperature before I change anything. And P2, V2, and T2 represent those values after the change occurs. Within this equation, I can see Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. If I hold temperature constant, where T1 and T2 don't change, then the only values that are going to be changing are pressure and volume, and that is Boyle's Law. If instead I hold pressure constant, where P1 and P2 are the exact same value, then the only values that will change are volume and temperature, described by Charles' Law. Lastly, if I hold volume constant, like I do in Gay-Lussac's law, then all that remains is pressure divided by temperature, showing the directly proportional relationship between those two values. 
I can use the combined gas law to calculate any kinds of changes in pressure, volume, and temperature that happen with a fixed amount of gas, where the amount of gas or the moles of gas are not changing from one situation to the next. In some cases, I may only change the volume or the pressure or the temperature, but I can also change all three and predict how those changes will affect the gas.